A parliamentary bill has been launched by Tory MP Sir Christopher Chirp calling for an independent review of COVID-19 vaccine damage. The COVID-19 vaccine damage bill wants the effects of jabs and what extent they've caused disablement to be considered as well as compensation for the victims. I think it's fair to say it's early days for the bill. It's only in its second reading, but Sir, Sir Christopher is hoping for it to be enacted and he joins me now. Good evening to you. Good evening, Michelle. What was the catalyst for you bringing forward this bill? Because I know people who have suffered as a result of having COVID-19 vaccines. And I think it's important in order to boost vaccine confidence that people who do the right thing and have a vaccine and are in that very small minority of people who suffer adverse effects, that they should be compensated by the state for having done the right thing, but having suffered in that way. And how in your mind, though, do we actually look to uh, prove or connect who has been um, impacted, had health impacts because directly, the key has to be directly because of a vaccine. What system do you propose is used as the benchmark for that? Well, there are systems elsewhere in the world, including one which actually we, our taxpayers are funding for, under the COVAX scheme. And those systems are uh, no fault liability, where the presumption is that if there's an unexpected adverse reaction following a, a, a vaccine, then the presumption is that the, that reaction is as a result of the vaccine rather than from some other reason. So the, there have been quite a lot of discussion about having a, a no-fault compensation scheme for this arrangement, and I think that that's the way forward. But I'm pleased that I'm going to be able to see the minister who's responsible now, on Monday. Uh, she's very kindly agreed to meet me to discuss my bill, which is a good outcome so far. And what I want to do is to get the government uh, to start being more open with the public about uh, the fact that people, uh, a minority of people, have suffered as a result of having vaccination. And I've tried to get information out of the government on this. I was told that the information about the number of people who had died within 28 days of being vaccinated wasn't available. I then asked uh, for the information in relation to those who died within 21 days of being vaccinated, and I was told uh, that that information is not available. But on the 13th of September, the Office for National Statistics, uh, they actually did publish uh, that information, and th that information shows that um, in the six months to the 2nd of July, uh, just over uh, 30,000 uh, people had uh, died within six months of re receiving the vaccine. If I got those uh, figures uh, correct, remind myself of the, the, of the figures. Yes, 30,305 deaths in England between the 2nd and of January and the 2nd of July within 21 days of being vaccinated. Now, we're not saying that's because they were vaccinated. But that's an indication of uh, the, uh, the figures that there are there. And rather than cover up those figures, I think it's much better for the government to say um, out of those, a small number probably were caused by the vaccine directly. And we, the government, will compensate uh, the, those people who have been adversely affected and their families where there was a, a resulting a death as a result. Yeah, I mean, it's fair to say, though, um, as well, that you've received some criticism, haven't you? I'm looking, there's a, a document prepared by a full fact-checking organisation that is saying that when you're talking about this, when you did your second reading of this in um, the House of Lords, I think it was, you know, you were talking about the yellow card uh, data and you're calling that vaccine damage, which they say is misleading to say that the yellow card data can be uh, deduced as being pure and correlation to the vaccine. Well, the, the trouble with the, the so-called full fact organisation is that they're very selective about this because obviously the headline figure of 1.3 million or so people who have died uh, with COVID-19, uh, those figures are not uh, actually accurate in terms of people having died because of COVID-19. And in a similar way, the figures about the number of people who have had adverse reactions or who have died 
within a specified period after receiving a vaccination don't show that that's the direct result of having had that vaccination. Uh, and so comparing like with like, uh, I, I think it's perfectly fair to put those facts, which are the only ones that are available, because the government um, seems to almost be in denial that anybody has uh, suffered as a result of having a COVID vaccination. Though we know we have a current report from uh, the New Newcastle of somebody who sadly uh, did uh, die and who has been confirmed as a result of the, uh, the coroner's report um, to have died as a result of the COVID-19. There must be lots of other people who have suffered, sadly, in a similar way. And all I'm asking is for the government to recognise that um, and boost vaccine confidence by making it clear that those who do suffer adverse consequences um, are looked after. Okay, Christopher Chirp, thank you for your time.